August 21st, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Psalms chapters 98 and 99 of the Old Testament. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he performs amazing deeds. His right hand and his mighty arm accomplish deliverance. The Lord demonstrates his power to deliver. In the sight of the nations, he reveals his justice. He remains loyal and faithful to the family of Israel. All the ends of the earth see our God deliver us. Shout out praises to the Lord, all the earth. Break out in a joyful shout and sing. Sing to the Lord accompanied by a harp, accompanied by a harp and the sound of music. With trumpets and the blaring of the ram's horn, shout out praises before the King, the Lord. Let the sea and everything in it shout, along with the world and those who live in it. Let the rivers clap their hands, let the mountains sing in unison before the Lord, for he comes to judge the earth. He judges the world fairly and the nations in a just manner. The Lord reigns. The nations tremble. He sits enthroned above the winged angels. The earth shakes. The Lord is elevated in Zion. He is exalted over all the nations. Let them praise your great and awesome name. He is holy. The king is strong. He loves justice. You ensure that legal decisions will be made fairly. You promote justice and equity in Jacob. Praise the Lord our God. Worship before his footstool. He is holy. Moses and Aaron were among his priests. Samuel was one of those who prayed to him. They prayed to the Lord and he answered them. He spoke to them from a pillar of cloud. They obeyed his regulations and the ordinance he gave them. O oh Lord our God, you answered them. They found you to be a forgiving God, but also one who punished their sinful deeds. Praise the Lord our God. Worship on his holy hill. For the Lord our God is holy. God, it's interesting that Psalm 98 in this reading is actually the basis for one of our biggest Christmas songs that we sing in church, Joy to the World. And what is interesting about it is it wasn't even a, intended as a Christmas song. Isaac Watts, who wrote a lot of the hymns uh, that we sing in church, wrote the lyrics to Joy to the World um, all about Psalm 98, about heaven and nature, singing of, of Christ's glory. In that uh, beautiful song, he also talks about um, the coming Christ. And, you know, right in the middle of, of Psalm 98, it talks about, let the mountains sing in unison before the Lord, for he comes to judge the earth. He judges the world fairly and the nations in a just manner. And one of my favorite phrases um, that we sing in Joy to the World is, let every heart prepare him room. It's almost kind of hard to say it without singing it. <laughs> let every heart prepare him room. And I think even though this tends to be a Christmas song for us, I think that one piece, let every heart prepare him room, speaks so much with how we live today. It speaks a lot with our Old Testament reading today in Ecclesiastes as well. That we get so caught up in our world, so caught up in our kingdom, so caught up in our own wants and desires and selfishness, that we seem to have no room for God anymore. Or in passing, we spend a little bit of time with you on Sunday. Maybe we pray to you when we get in trouble. Uh, maybe we remember to thank you for something or ask forgiveness for th something, but it's an afterthought. We aren't making any room at all in our heart for you. In fact, you're getting squished between everything else that is filling up our heart, all the worldly things that are filling up our heart, if you're even there at all in some of our hearts. Yet in this beautiful hymn that we sing, Joy to the World, it talks about nature just sounding with joy, just reflecting how amazing you are, God, singing to you. And yet here's nature that isn't even your dear daughters and sons that you've created, and they are singing at the top of their lungs about you. And here we can barely make time for you on Sunday. 
I almost bopped the head of the guy in front of me at church on Sunday when he looked at his watch about three-fourths of the way through the sermon. Ugh! Although, I don't have any right to judge because I've done that before myself. So we, we try and fit you in between football games and TV shows and yoga classes and hanging out with our friends and work and kids and spouses and somewhere in there you become an afterthought. And yet as the song goes, that you rule the world with truth, referring to the justice that we just, just read in Psalm 98, and with grace, that amazing grace and mercy that you show us, and the glories of your righteousness and wonders of his love. God, how incredibly thankful we should be that you don't reciprocate our level of interest in this relationship. Oh my goodness, I can't even imagine how cursed we would be, as the song goes, how cursed we would be, how horrid our lives would be if you only showed the same amount of interest in us as we do in you. Our heart should be overflowing with thankfulness and love and mercy and grace for other people because we have received it a million times more than what we've ever deserved. God, help us to quit fitting you into our lives. You don't treat us that way. In fact, you find great joy in us for some reason. <laughs> God, help us to make you a priority. Make your kingdom a priority. And not just at Christmas time or Easter, but fill our hearts completely with room for you. And I know when we do this, I know when we do this, that everything else takes care of itself. All the worldly things that we think are so important fall off of our plate. And you are seated on the throne of our heart instead of all the things of this world. God, allow us to be as loud as nature is about you and your amazingness. Allow us to reflect as much as nature does about your true characters your consistency, your comfort, your forgiveness, your beautifulness, your grace. And God, thank you so much for loving me way more than I love you. And help me today to always not only prepare my heart for you, but always have room in my heart for you. God, I just want you to take over my world. I want all of these things that I'm holding on to in my heart to just be laid at your feet and you do with them what you need to. Throw them away or use them for your will. But I want my heart to be completely filled with you. I want my life to be completely filled with you. I want to repeat the sounding joy of telling others about you. And not just at Christmas time, but always. In your son's name I pray, amen.